Hey guys, this is a video on how to do the basic RGB mod on an N64. Now, these are generally on the older models that have NS1 serial numbers on them. Um, different board revisions, but as long as they have the older RGB chip, they're able to be modded. I'm going to be demonstrating it using one of the brand new THS7374 based chips. Um, for the most part, the installation is identical. There's just one different thing at the end, which I'll show you. So I'm just going to get started. Um, I used to, uh, I like to leave a towel down just so I don't scratch the plastic as I'm moving it around. I have just a cheap, you know, power screwdriver and the Nintendo game bit. So six screws total, those two legs each have a few. Oh. Don't do what I did. <laughs> Got it. Once you have the screws off, um, you have to pop the cover off, but you need to remove the expansion pack. Um, this is kind of hard to get to. I usually use the lid in order to pry it out like that, otherwise I can't really get my fingers in it. And the top cover just comes right off. As you can see, this one already actually has the Ultra HDMI built in, but um, you, this can exist with the RGB mod, the basic RGB mod. Also, um, when I used to do these mods, I used to take out all these screws, but it was actually Marshall, the inventor of the Ultra HDMI, that showed that I didn't have to do that. So I'll show you which ones. Now the screws up here are all pretty much the same. Um, they're easy to identify. The silver screws, as you can see here, um, they hold the two plastic bits in here and here. You'll have the two longer screws for the cartridge ports, um, and then the rest are pretty much the same. And the rest are smaller like these. So it's easy to differentiate. So those four screws on the side were all uh, the same size. This is where it gets a little tricky, and I'll show you which ones you have to take out. That one over there, and it's also good to pay attention to where each one goes just to make it easier. Alright, so those are all cleared off, and these two require a smaller screwdriver. Just take out my little kit here. These two longer screws. And then this whole center piece comes out. Um, this plastic piece you could put aside, but make sure you remember to put that back in, because many times I've assembled these things just to realize I need to take all the screws out all over again. So this one already has the Ultra HDMI installed. You guys won't need to worry about that at all if it's just a basic console. Uh, so I'm just going to be taking mine out. Also these two uh, uh, brass gold pieces here tend to fall out. So I would just leave that case upright. Remove the bottom plate. And I guess I'll remove the Ultra HDMI just to keep it out of the way for this. Okay, I'll put it over here so I interfere. So the entire mod is all really just going to be in this area here. You're just connecting uh, a few spaces, which I'll show close-ups of, but you're basically just connecting the RGB pins uh, directly into the multi-out um, using this amp. So the amp would fit right over the multi-out. And um, some of these amps, um, the coating on the bottom is non-conductive, and others it is. So I recommend adding a little bit of non-conductive tape to the bottom. So I'm going to do that and uh, start to connect it all up. Before we go any further, I just need to talk really quickly about sync. If you're using a sync on Luma cable, or if you're using one of the older revision boards that doesn't have any sync stripper built in, 
um, then this doesn't apply to you at all um, and just fast forward about a minute. But if you need to use a sync stripper or if you're using um, a, a RGB cable that gets sync off of the C-Sync pin 3, you need to worry about which revision motherboard you have. So this is the NUS CPU 04, which does still support RGB, but does not have sync run to the multi-out. So if you look, uh, it's hard to see, so I'm going to use a little poker. So that is the pin of the multi-out, pin 3, right there. And if you follow its trace, you can see it goes here, but there is no resistor there. It's kind of hard to see. I'll see if I can get close up. So there is a surface mount resistor right there and on the rest of them, but there's nothing here that's empty. So for us, I am going to be using the sync stripper, and I don't need to do anything because there's no resistor there, meaning there's nothing going to the sync pin at all. Um, if you used an older revision board, like the th uh, 1, 2, or 3, there would be a resistor here, and all you would have to do is heat up that resistor. Basically, you just take your soldering iron, heat it up on the side, and then pull it off with a pair of tweezers, and that releases all the signal that's going to sync so that you could use in the built-in sync stripper in this board. So um, that might not apply to you, but it's something worth talking about in the video. Okay, so I just added a bit of non-conductive tape to the bottom of this board. This particular model board didn't need it, but you know what? It doesn't hurt anything at all. There's nothing bad to come of it, so I would just do it anyway just to be safe. Um, now, we already checked that we don't need to mess with that resistor for sync, so we could just put this right on top and solder it on. And while you don't need to solder all the pins, um, I do most of them anyway just to make sure it's a nice thorough fit. Um, so just you know, basic soldering, make sure to clean off your tip between each one, and then just some solder right on the pins. And also make sure to tin the pads down here as well, make it a little easier. So um, I left the two end ones off because that's just left and right audio and uh, they don't really need to be connected anyway, but um, you know, it kind of looks worse in the video than it does in person, to be honest with you. Um, I'm looking at it through the camera lens now and it looks like a bad job, but <laughs> I'll go touch them up again. But as long as they're solid and it makes the connection, let me just go t touch each one up. Yeah, wow, it still looks bad on camera. Um, well, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, just make sure that, you know, you don't use too much and you, uh, that all the connections are made solid. So I obviously didn't use too much at all. Um, but, it, you know, it, uh, it's definitely looking good in person. Solid contacts around all sides, no space, nothing, you know, blooming up onto another one. So uh, that should be it. Okay, so here comes the part that almost everybody that's a beginner makes a mistake on. So we are going to tap uh, red, green, blue off of 8, 9, and 10 holes. They call them vias, but it's basically the holes. So the two most common things is on the other side of this is a chip. And if, you, if your wire sticks through and touches anything on the other side, then you're going to short it out. You could ruin your unit, but more likely you're just not going to have a correct video. And the other thing is it doesn't make a solid connection. So the two things that we have to solve that issue are cables with very short ends to them. Probably make it focus better this way. So that way they won't poke through to the other side. And very important, flux. So um, I, uh, I used a flux pen for a while that worked perfect. Um, I use this now just because I wanted to try something different. But uh, I've had great luck with both. Um, I'm not an expert, not, not even close. So maybe there's something I don't know. Maybe there is one that's better than the other. Um, but I basically just put right on top. And don't worry, we'll clean this off before we actually do it. But right on top of 8, 9, and 10, just make sure it's got a bunch of flux right on there. Uh, it's kind of hard to see in the video, but I covered it pretty good. Not too bad. It's not, you know, exploding over. And then 
take your soldering. Okay. Tin the ends of the wire. So tinning is just um, when you add a little bit of solder to each. It's probably not going to show up in the video, but... All right, and I can already tell a couple of them look a little too long. Um, at least one of them does, so I'm going to trim that down. You basically, the goal is to get them just about as thick as the motherboard. Um, that way they don't go through at all. Okay. Now, the, what the flux does is it allows the connection between just the solder parts and not the rest. So I'll do one first and I'll show you on camera. But So, um, oh, I was just, as you can see, it's strong. I mean, it's strong enough to hold the whole motherboard up. I wouldn't recommend doing that. I just wanted to show you as a, just a demonstration. And as you can see, it, that hole's now uh, solid, filled, and that's, and they're really good. And it's the flux that makes the connection that well. So I'll do it again. Stick the wire in. And I guess my trick is I kind of pull the wire out just a hair so that it exposes the wire and the metal and make sure that it doesn't, um, doesn't touch the chip on the other side. Okay, get the second one in there. Nice and solid. And, uh, you know, don't freak out if it pulls out, then you just repeat the process. But um, definitely don't try to hold the motherboard up on it like I did. Just, uh, just give it a nice, healthy tug. I cut that one really short, so I, it wouldn't even stay in. I had to just put the solder in the hole first. Once again, pretty darn solid. So uh, 8, 9, and 10 is red, green, blue. Um, and then you want to cut them to size and solder them to wherever the pads are. You don't need to use heat shrink tubing, but I like to. Just uh, try to find a nice thin piece here. So I'll start with blue because it's on the end. Wire to size. Sometimes the hardest thing is getting the end off of this Kynar wire, to be honest with you. Oh, there we go. Tin the wire. So that looks to be just about the perfect length. It might even be just a hair too small. So I'm going to make sure to cut the other ones just a tiny bit longer. This wire is so thin it's pretty hard to work with sometimes. Well, at least for, for non-experts. Okay, tin those two wires as well. All right, now we're just soldering to the corresponding pins on the board itself. So we're, uh, we're almost there and just adding them right up. So 
So that's an okay job. It's not great. Um, the wires could be cut a little bit better to length. I could trim them up and make them look a little nicer. So I'm going to do that because I just want to make this look uh, a little more presentable. So uh, I'll be right back. You know, I probably should have left the camera on because uh, it does look a little bit better and it only took another 30 seconds. So, you know, for a while I used to do mods that were just good enough and I still would only call this good enough. I'll never be nearly as good as some of the pros I've seen. But, you know, the purpose of this is all three wires are separated. You, they're not touching at all there. Wow, it looks so much worse on camera than it does in person. <laughs> um, you know, there's nothing spilling across. Everything's nice and neat. So it looks like a good install. So what I'm going to do is then just take a little bit of alcohol. And this is just to get off um, the rest of the flux. Um, some people don't bother doing this. Um, I, I don't think there would be a problem. So just a tiny bit. Of, just clean the area around it. And you could feel when it's clean because it's kind of like a gummy feel to it. And when you run the Q-tip around, when it starts getting slippery again, you know it's probably all cleaned up. I don't know if I can see it on camera, but yeah, it's crystal clear. So for many people, this will be it. This would be the last step before testing. Um, but the newer boards that have the sink stripper built in, uh, which is this chip over here, that is a new option that's pretty neat. Um, so if you could see that these two pins are not together, that means the jumper is off. So whatever was flowing to that sink pin, pin three, is has um, you know whatever is there was already was uninterrupted. I guess is the best way to say it. So if you had a CPU or one that already had sync going directly to it, um, then you would just leave this alone. And like I said, some of the older revision boards didn't even have that at all. But what, um, what is great about this is for the boards that don't have sync, or for the boards, um, board revisions that have sync but aren't compatible with some displays, all you have to do is jump these together. Okay, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this behind the camera. <laughs> so let me do this down here. Sorry. There we go. So now we have jumped those two pins together. You could test with a multimeter if you want. So now sync is going. So let me plug this thing into a monitor and give it a shot. Okay, so we have it just on the bench, plugged in. And notice I have the memory card plugged in. So I can't tell you how many times I have done an N64 mod for one of my friends, forgot to plug this in, and then when you turn it on, nothing happens. You just get a black screen and nothing. So the light's on, but nothing's coming through. And it freaks me out because I think I did something wrong. But nope. Install the adapter. And there we go. And I like using Mario 64. Uh, now you can't see because of a reflection. But because um, you could see the red, green, and blue right on the screen even without a controller plugged in. So you'd be able to see the different colors come through, see the sharpness. Um, and it seems to work perfect, actually. So we got lucky. We got this one done in one shot. So I'll just flip it over one more time and show you guys troubleshooting things just in case it didn't work for you. So for troubleshooting, the number one thing, of course, check for the memory card. And, you know, make sure the game's good, obviously. It's a tested game. If you don't have Mario 64, you could use any one. But just make sure that you can see all of the colors. But the number one thing for all of these installs is that these three solder points did not work right. I've had people that were pretty good at modding, that they've sent me pictures, and it was beautiful work. It looked cleaner and neater than this, but they didn't use flux. And I just asked, you know, hey, just try this. Just try ordering a flux pen, covering it in flux, and doing it again, and it fixed it for them. So that is 90% of the time that I get it. Um, I've never seen a bad one of these boards. A couple people have ruined them by using uh, too, hot, um, too hot of a temperature on their soldering irons, but I've never seen the boards go bad. So that's pretty much it. That and if these wires stick through to the other side, uh, I'll show a picture on the website of that, but I've seen a few of those. But other than that, um, it's a pretty simple install. And once again, you won't have this flap. That's just the Ultra HDMI. So let's get this thing back together. So as you might have noticed, this board interferes directly where the bottom shield comes on. So. You could leave it on that. That's actually non-conductive, leaving it on the top of the chips. But then 
you'll have that space. So what you need to do is bend this tab down. Now I'm sure there's a more elegant way to do this. If uh, Michael from Badass Consoles or Zach Boltar was here, they'd probably just cry and laugh at me, but I like solutions that work. This is my N64. Uh, I don't do customer installs. That's uh, I just work on my own stuff because to be honest, I'm not good enough. So that actually doesn't look bad at all. All right, I'm kind of happy with that. I uh, don't know if you can see it, but it is not touching anything at all. Everything else is fully, um, can be pushed down without any problems, no interference. So we're good to go. I'm just gonna bolt this sucker back in. Okay, as stated before, don't forget about this thing. Um, You'll have to take the whole thing apart. That's the first thing that goes on. So now this is the only other part that I wanted to mention. I removed all of the screws from the bottom with a power screwdriver, but I'm gonna put them all back in by hand because it's very, very easy to either crack the plastic or to warp it, or it's more common on SNES minis, but sometimes you'll get little divots in the plastic where the screws come through. Um, and that's even on some of the factory ones as well. All right, so the feet are in good. No separation on the plastic at all, so the screws are tight enough. Let's plug this thing in and give it one last try. So that's it. As you can see, it's a success. This video should work with any of the THS 7314 and 7374 boards, including the do-it-yourself ones or any of the pre-assembled. And this one obviously shows the extra step if you would like the sink stripper built in or if you'd like to try to integrate your own. This is one of the first modding videos I've done. I've done a million other videos, but this is one of the first modding videos I've done. So any feedback, criticism, even if you think it was terrible, just let me know in the comments and I promise I'll get better with each one. But good luck on your M64 and uh, hopefully it was as easy and smooth as this one was.